is uh, Anthony Jones. Do you guys know me? I think so. Um, I, I talk a lot, that's why. I'm always talking, I'm always putting my work out there. Um, how many of you guys, by show of hands, know my, my life story of becoming an artist? Okay. So not too many, so I'm going to tell you guys my life story. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just trying to see, because if there's a lot of you guys, then I can talk about other stuff. Because like I said, I can talk a lot. Um, and you can just go through my images. It's, there's no relevance. Um, this is how I draw. This is what I draw. Um, so I'm not an artist. Right? I've been lying to you guys all these years. Uh, I just got really good at tricking people to believe that I'm actually an artist. Uh, the reality is that I'm a musician. At least that's what I thought it was. Because when I was 14 years old, I was like, I'm going to be a, a rock star. But if you've ever been in a band, you realize it's like a marriage. And if you've ever been married, then you understand what I'm talking about. But if you haven't, then it's like being in a relationship with people that disagree with you all the time. You're like, hey, we've got to practice three hours a day. I mean, that's the only way to make it. And they're like, ah, nah. I'd rather play video games. Or I'd rather go dirt bike riding. Whatever the, the excuse was. Um, and so I had to make a choice because I was about 20 years old, and I worked at the Old Navy, I worked at the Gap, and actually, ironically, I loved working at Old Navy. Something about like folding clothes and like just talking to people, like, where are you from, man? Like, like you want this cardigan in a large, or um, I can go get it for you, it'd be great. Uh, but then, you know, it didn't make enough money. And, you know, the, the way that we've been brought up in society, you got to make a lot of money to be successful, right? And so I was like, okay, so let me try to do different jobs. So I was a beer merchandiser for a little bit. Uh, so here's a tip. If you go to, like, anywhere, restaurant, or uh, not a restaurant, but, like, a grocery store, all the good stuff's in the back. Because that's my job. I was basically taking all the, 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 the bad stuff and putting it in the front so that you buy it and it expires in two days, you know? And so that's a good tip. So you didn't think you would learn how to shop for groceries, but now you do. All the good milk is in the back, which I would advise not to drink. Um, anyway, so then I worked uh, at Boys and Girls Club. I worked uh, cleaning restrooms at, on truck stops, working with special adults, people that have special needs, but they're adults and they need jobs. So I did that, and that was kind of cool. That was very humbling. And then I became a plumber, and this is where things get real crappy. Ah, <laughs> dude, I've got the jokes. So, but literally, it was very crappy. And so one day, I pulled a cat out of a drain. That's probably why I draw like monsters. Oh, that's like, there's the cat right there, reincarnated, <laughs> coming back for revenge. Um, what that means, though is that someone flushed the cat down a toilet. So it's, it really is a grim story, and let's stop talking about it. But that was the day that I decided, what the hell am I doing? I needed to figure out. And I was making a lot of money as a plumber. And so I was like, OK, I like to play video games. Maybe there's a career there. And I saw a commercial for DeVry. I was like, DeVry, you'll make a job out of you. What? What does that mean? OK, I'll go. And then I went, and I was like, this is like high school, too. But it's like easier. The hell is this? So I got out of there real quick. I think I was only there for like two weeks. Um, and I was like, this is some bull. And uh, I, got, I, I left right away. And then I, I uh, saw another commercial. And it was like, we'll give you a job if you come here. And I was like, whoa, that sounds promising. Uh, and that was the Art Institute. That's all I had to say. You guys made the right choice. Uh, so I, I went to the Art Institute for about like, uh, like a few months as a programmer because I'm not an artist, guys. I, I, I didn't draw at all. I mean, we all drew when we were kids. I mean, some more than others, clearly, where they were like, like they were banished if they were drawing. Yeah, that's like crazy. That's an awesome story. I didn't have that. If I was drawing, my parents wouldn't have cared. Like, you yeah, have such an awesome story of triumph. And, um, and for me, it was like less of that. I was spoiled. I was given whatever. Uh, but when I was living on my own, it wasn't so, so great. I didn't know how to do my own laundry, for instance. So what the hell? As a plumber, I can like pull dead cats but not clean my clothes. Um, 
So, you know, went there because I'm half Korean, so I thought, hey, you know, the half Korean side, we get the, the math, <laughs> right? Like, do math and science. Like, Asian parent, where's the Asian mama? Oh, yeah, she's, <laughs> she's doing some math and science right now as we talk. <laughs> No, like, uh, I have, like a, a, like, a strict Asian mother, and she was, like, all about that. And so I thought, okay, you know, I, I'm going to try the, the, the programming. And so I tried programming, but programming was, like, uh, was very hard, and I realized I was racist because <laughs> I was no good at this math stuff. Um, and I was like, oh, that, I think that was very racist of me to assume that just because of my Korean heritage, I would have been just awesome at math. And so, um, but I am really fast at running. I'm half black, so <laughs> that might also be racist. Uh, so I went to, as a programmer, it was very hard, but I was committed. And then I saw, like, these other people that were in the art program, and they were drawing Dragon Ball Z characters. And I was like, is that what, what? I can trace, <laughs> I can trace Dragon Ball Z characters for days. And so I was like, and that looked like a lot more creative job because I was a musician, remember? And so I said, okay, I'm going to try that instead. And so I went to the counselor and said, hey, I want to switch majors. This seems like such a cooler job. And she was like, well, do you have a portfolio? And I was like, no. Isn't that why I'm here? So you could teach me how to have a portfolio? What the hell's going on? First clue. <laughs> First clue. And then uh, so she said, no, you can't unless you have a portfolio. So I said, okay. So it's funny because when I was at... Uh, AI, we were in life drawing classes, and when I first took them as a programmer, I was kind of like, why do I have to take drawing? I'm a programmer. I need numbers. Zeros and ones, bro. Zeros and ones. Zeros and ones. And, uh, <laughs> and, and then when I decided to switch the majors, I realized that my teacher was Charles Hugh, who was one of the greatest like Chinese figure artists in the world. And I was like, can you do like a, a demo for me, like a leg demo? And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll do it, let's no more. I'll draw you. And I'll just be like, oh. And then I'll just, like, rip the page and, like, you know, like, laminate it and everything and realize that this probably was worth thousands of dollars. Uh, but then I drew a lot. And I remember going into the counselor's room, and I, like, dropped, like, like this big binder full of hundreds of drawings that I did in, like, two months. And uh, I was like, I want to switch majors now. And he's like, look at my portfolio. And she opened it up. She said, okay, we'll switch you over. She just looked at one page. I was like, no, there, no, there's more. Like, look. And uh, second clue. <laughs> second clue. And so then I discovered concept art. I, I made, like, some of my best friends, like Kalen. Like, we went to the school together. Uh, we did concept club. We would draw together. We would hang out with each other. And we would draw and draw and draw all the time. And uh, when I first started with those guys, I was the worst of them. Right, because I just didn't know. I think Edgar was the best of us, right? He was like definitely the one that taught us how to do stuff. And he was the one that taught me how to digitally paint. And he was like, yeah, just wake on tablet and just do this stuff. And I was like, what is this stuff? And then like, that's when it clicked though, that video games and movies, yes, there's, there's art there. But then I realized there's art everywhere. The job of an artist has always been perceived as like a kind of like you're a weird kid or you're a weird person or you're a special special person that has a special craft um, and harnessing the imaginary world that no one else can see or whatever. And I realized then that that's, uh, that's a, the greatest lie that we've been taught since around middle school. And, you know, what I, re what I mean by this is that, think about this, this room that we're in. Someone had to draw this, didn't they? Design this first, right? An artist, someone creative. Think about the shoes you're wearing, right? Someone designed that, convinced you that they were so cool that you had to spend $100 on them, right? Shirts you wear, the hat that I'm wearing, the clothes that you wear, the car that you drive, the, the movies that you watch, of course, the games that you play, of course, um, the apps on your phone, the phone itself, the store that you went into, all these things were designed by artists. In fact, we're surrounded by creative creations, but yet there's only like three jobs you can get in this world. Are you kidding me? Like engineer, scientist, doctor. 
Sounds familiar, Mama Tran? I just, <laughs> not for <what> I me. Mean. <laughs> I'm like, well, I have some resentment for my own mother. That's, that's what that was. Um, but, but this is not just an Asian problem. This is an American, right, a, a Western idea. And, you know, when I got my first concept art job, uh, a lot of people, like, ask, like, good questions about, like, what should I put in my portfolio? How do I get a job in an industry? And I'm going to answer those questions right now so that you guys don't have to ask them later. You can ask better questions. Um, because for me, all I ever did was draw a lot. That's all I did. Now, there's obviously little mind, like, like things that I did and changed about myself and it made me a better artist, of course. There's definitely subtle things, but to become a, you know, a good doctor, you have to take a lot of school for a reason. There's a reason why college and that stuff ex exists for that job, because if you're about to cut me open, I would like to know that you know more anatomy than me, right? And you can prove that with tests and a piece of paper. You really can. Engineering is the same thing, right? If someone's going to drive that car, and if someone accidentally bumps into it, in the back of it, it shouldn't incinerate into flames, right? They, they actually, this recently happened. Someone, I think it was like, I forget which company, but they did like a huge recall. That's an engineering problem. Engineers put, and scientists, that's a good, that's a good one too, but it, I realize scientists don't need papers for what they do. They're actually great. But, you know, science put robots on Mars, you know what I mean? Like, you need some real clarification for your education. But for most of the other jobs that there are, which is, I'm try I promise you, there's not just three. There's more than three jobs out there. Uh, you, you don't need a degree. You don't need an, uh, a certificate to prove that. And all I did was make a portfolio that was good enough and made a lot of good friends that helped me get jobs. And that's what you guys should do too. Everyone in here, if you guys work really hard and draw a lot, you will most likely get a great job and work in the industry. And their friend or your friends will also get jobs. And they'll help you get into the industry even better. And vice versa. Right? I'm here because Kaylin said, hey, you want to do a talk? And I said, okay. Seriously, it was that simple. It wasn't like, well, let's go through the, the regimen of things you have to do to be successful. All right, let's let's go through the ring. No, he's like, you want to do it? I was like, yeah, okay. Yeah, sure, I wanna, uh, let's do it. It was that simple, okay? Whenever people see people like me and like the, the speakers up here, when they look at us, they think we were like once like, a, it's like an egg, like we were egg and then we cracked and it was like we're chicken now, right? Like now we are awesome, we are successful. And I wanna make it very clear to you that that's clearly not how it works, that's not how nature works. Nature works like this. First, there is conception. We don't need to go into that. All right, I'm, uh, hopefully, you guys understand this. But the egg needed to be made, and then the egg develops, and it becomes hardened, and it becomes a shell, and then the, the, the chicken or the mother hen lays the egg and sits on it. And while it's, she's sitting on it, what's happening? Is it a chicken already and just waiting, like, uh, wait till it's about, you know, a few months from now, come out when I'm ready? No. It starts developing its lungs, its heart, its beak, its wings, until what? It's ready to crack the egg, right? And that cracking the egg was no more significant than the previous steps. Does this make sense? Do you understand? And then, then she becomes a little baby chick, and then she grows up, becomes bigger, and then maybe has her own little baby egg. Or baby chicks. Baby eggs. So, so whenever people ask me, like, what was the, the, the defining moment in your career, or what was the moment that made a big difference to you, or like, what was the, that, and I tell them I don't really know, because every moment was pretty defining, wasn't it? You know, every single step of the way led me to the point where I'm talking to you guys here. Um, when I, being in a band allowed me to be very comfortable in front of a lot of people, you know? Because I used to play in front of thousands of people when I was in my band. Um, being in a, like playing musical instruments allowed me to be creative. Um, then becoming a plumber allowed me to decide I don't want to plumb. And then, uh, and then going to one school, realizing that was a bullcrap school, going to another school, which ended up becoming a bullcrap school in disguise. Um, and then, then gro like dropping out of that school, getting my first freelance job, then getting a, a job with Kalen, and then losing that job 
about to move in with my girlfriend, now wife, then, you know, having to really pull the strings, working then for Sony, then for Blizzard, and then making my own business and teaching people, and then now, again, talking in front of you guys. There was never really any defining moment. And that's what I'm trying to say, okay? And for, so for a lot of you guys right now, that's really hard to see. It's really hard to have the foresight to see where you're going to be, right? But trust that if you are genuinely drawing, you know, hours out of your day, really working towards your goal, you'll, you'll make it. I, I promise that. That's, that's almost guaranteed. Now, will you be happy there? That's a whole different question. That's a whole different question. Um, and we'll say that for some other panel, right? But when it comes down to it, I guess this is kind of my, the end of my speech, and I'll give Dan the mic. Um, the end of it all is that, you know, you guys should worry about having your portfolio be good, for sure. I agree with that. Uh, but don't forget that this is just one step to becoming who you are. And if you're not happy now, it's very similar to like what Ross was saying, which I thought was great. This is if you're not happy with doing what you're doing now, then rethink, regroup. I think that's a really good way of going about your life, okay? And uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for listening to my life story. Yeah.